Hey, what's up, guys? And we finally got Obi-Wan and we were all right. Just a big bait and switch written by hacks who can't even bother to at least get the continuity right and hide behind racism to defend any criticism of the show because they can't deal with the fact that the show is just another show and another character that Disney ruined again. And it's really surprising how many people thought this was actually good. But I just want to say this at the start. This isn't an attack on any of the people, the actresses, or anyone playing it. It's literally just the characters in the show. I don't care. Like, literally, no one cares what color they are. There's no racism. There's nothing, none of that. It's just a critique of the show and the characters. That's it. All right. I'll start by saying I'm not going into the Order 66 opening and all those snowflakes relating it to recent events. That's kind of ridiculous and you just, you need to grow up. Um, it has nothing to do with it. Don't conflate it with other things. It has nothing to do with it. It's just recapping an event that happened in Star Wars a long time ago. So let's just get over it. So this follows Obi-Wan who's been living in a cave for like 10 years now. And when I first heard about this show, I first thought, why the hell would they pick a time where he's just sitting in a cave for like 20 years? It doesn't seem like there'd be much that you can do with that. Well, we know why now. Because it's the perfect time to inject some new diversity characters and make Layla even a stronger, more powerful Whammon character by making her a little shit. Yeah, because, you know, that's what everyone likes. Anyway, so he's been working at this meat packing plant when some random Jedi apprentice appears and he somehow tracks him down in the middle of nowhere because reasons. But this also brings the new Inquisitors that they, I guess, have been tracking all the Jedi around. And that makes sense because that was what was going on in the Rebel time show so that kind of makes sense and i was happy to see them bring the grand inquisitor back because he was out of a lot of the antagonists in star wars the grand inquisitor from rebels was a really good antagonist to the show and they did a good job getting the look of him, of them well besides one of them one of them and the third sister is the problem because first of all she's a yellow alien while the the others are face painted to look, kind of look like the other counterparts that they're playing from the the rebel show and that's where these guys are from and it's just kind of weird that <laughs> they would make the other ones not like they make the other ones close to their counterpart in the show but race swap this one and okay don't make don't make like the black person kind of you know closer to their counterpart it's just it kind of it's kind of weird when they do that and honestly it makes it look weird when you don't do that for the actress who, who just happens to be black but do it for the other ones who are white it's kind of it's that's that's kind of racist to me and they make it very, and they make it very like manic and obsessive. Watching Obi Wan for some reason, while well, this really wasn't explained. Oh, and how insubordinate she is! This wouldn't be tolerated by the by Grandy. He would just slice her down right there. And then we get some weird scenes of Obi Wan watching Luke and doing drive by drop off toy deliveries and telling Owen that he needs to start training him. Like, um, pretty sure Obi Wan didn't want to train him the whole time. So, like, didn't you watch the New Hope at all? Because he said that he didn't really want to train Luke. So in the first 20 minutes, we race drop the Inquisitor. Obi-Wan sent a Jedi to die, and we broke the continuity of, of the show. Huh. Awesome job, guys. Oh, and it gets worse. The second half is even worse, because we get introduced to Layla, and oh my god, is she fucking annoying. This is... She is so bad. She's the smartest one in the room, can read everyone, has a quippy clap back to everything and she's apparently an, an olympic runner as well because during the capture scene it took all three stooges trying to get her and it looked ridiculous like there were these guys just tripping over each other trying to get her and of course she's the only person and of course the only person they can call is obi-wan like can't you just hire a bunch of bounty hunters i'm the galaxy is full of bounty hunters and you have a lot of money so why is obi-wan the only one you can send and he's probably one of the most wanted persons out there so why would you send like a wanted person who can easily be like identified. I'm pretty sure, you know, he's been around forever, so everyone knows what he looks like. And the Empire has a good dig on the galaxy, so I'm sure they have wanted posters of, of him and other Jedis that would have been around. They would have seen him. So why the hell would you send Obi-Wan out? Just, cause I know why, but just, just it doesn't make sense at all. And and then when he's and then when he's leaving, he like flashes the lightsaber in like holy fuck the whole time you're you're tr you're trying to hide your identity you've thrown away your lightsabers and but let's just flash it everyone and it, like it's a hood ornament or something like you should be I don't know where you keep it but you, I'm sure there's somewhere you don't you don't have to keep it on your belt where you can easily be seen I I don't know I just I know it's for us but functionally it's, it's it's stupid I'll move on to the the second part of the episode the second episode was it was just Obi Wan looking 
and trying to rescue Layla on some crime planet city and they didn't miss a beat to mess it up even more because once he finds Layla it is revealed that this is a third sister plan the whole time and she's figured out that Layla is connected to Obi-Wan because of some archives that there were just around somewhere that no one happened to see for 10 plus years. I don't know how that makes sense at all. Literally the flimsiest goose I've ever seen and if you don't think that the chase scene was good the first time around we got another one with Obi-Wan chase here chasing this Oompa Loompa around and him fumbling around like a nine-year-old man. It was just embarrassing to see this again and on top of that we have Disney Inquisitor brooding on top of the tower like Batman during the chase scene and we get this one minute of her like parkouring around there I could I guess trying to get there but she never makes it there so it just seemed like a a whole waste of a, like a minute of watching her just do flips and twists and all that. It's just like, why, why have that? And then we get her like doing this Kylo Ren power, uh, extracting information thing. Like he did to, with, with uh, Ray in that other trilogy. Cause she just extracts the information out of the, the fake Jedi just looks at him, just does the hand thing. And Ooh, I know all, I know all the thing the plot needs to tell me. So, I mean, uh, it just seems if you're going to have her be mean, yeah, you already proven that she's will do anything to anyone to get any info out of him. So you, why didn't you just have her, like chop off limbs? Like why do we have to do the stupid thing where she like just waves her hand and then she knows everything the plot needs to know? Like you could have just done something at least that could have been more in line with their character. So we come to the end and oh boy was this a shit show. The Grand Inquisitor finds out about her plans and they all meet at the last escape ship and I don't know how he just doesn't kill her at this point. She's been making a fool of him the whole time. But of course, she literally just kills the fucking Grand Inquisitor with no resistance at all. Like, he's a fucking Grand Inquisitor. Why is even having him there is just to embarrass him like him like that? May as well just make her the Grand Inquisitor and save us all from seeing you ruin the, the character. It was just really weird. Like, kind of just, even like anticlimactic. Like, you know, he was supposed to be this great antagonist for most of the series. And he gets chopped in half. And like, at 100 minutes, he and he's gone. He's, he's supposed to be the cunning grand inquisitor and he should have been able to like stop that or something like i would have been fine with like the betrayal and what she was doing but like i i don't know i was just turned off as soon as she she chopped him in half or whatever she stabbed him because that was that was like well i'm done because this is this is stupid (laughs) we have like a supported just instantly killing the grand inquisitor all right (laughs) i'm pretty sure he's a grand inquisitor for a reason not just because uh he he looks cool so, it looks like we were right from the first trailer. This is the Layla show and Obi-Wan just carting her around. And him just being a background character in his own show. And like all these other Disney shows, they keep pushing out. But I don't think anyone was expecting to see the Grand Inquisitor getting cucked like that. And they ruined a perfectly good antagonist. That would have been awesome to see for this angry black woman who can do it all better. But what else are we expecting? And again, I just want to say at the end, I'm not attacking any of the actresses or anyone else this is just a critique of the show and the characters because they, they disney keeps doing this they'll parade around old characters that everybody grew up with and like and they'll just have them being cart you know be, being carted around by these other new characters or all the characters that they just want to prop up for the sake of i i don't know diversity i really don't know why they keep doing this uh, they have a lot of easy home runs they can easily be doing but instead we're doing uh this trash there's a lot of good star wars stuff out there that they can easily do but instead we're doing this i I just don't get it it makes zero sense to me when you have such easy home runs and it's so easy like a lot of it's even written for you you can just just uh, you know adapt it and you change some things here and there and you'd have it's easy stuff I i just don't get it you you bought an IP with so much lore and fan fictions. You can, there's just so much to choose from, and yet we're doing this trash. And I don't know. It just would have been better to have Obi Wan in a time period, even like an earlier one. I I know you probably couldn't get Liam to come back, and I know he said he he wouldn't come back at all, unless it's a a movie, because he won't come to. the the small screen because he's I don't know he's too big for that like Liam you're like a hundred you take what you get dude but I guess when people keep giving him those uh those action movies <laughs> to just <laughs> roll around in he whatever but they can get someone else to play Obi Wan it would it would have been cool to see like him doing a bunch of little adventures of him getting better as a uh, as an apprentice and all that that 
It could have had a lot of fun stuff there. It could have been like like uh, Man- like Mandalorian. They just have self-contained small adventures in each episode or something like that and have an overarching one. They could have been hunting down or some sort of Sith Lord or something. There was a lot of they could have done. Or a Sith Lord chasing them. Who knows? There could have been so much more they could have done. But yeah, we got we get in this trash where he's carting around Layla. And she's apparently the best. And she's... I don't know. <laughs> it was hard to watch. And I fear it's only going to get worse. And anyways. If you can like, comment, and sub. That would be awesome. And uh, thanks for listening.